In the next step, we'll do something that none of the built-in primitives in 3ds Mac does. That's uh, assigning a material at creation time. In order to do this, we'll have to slightly modify our transform mesh function to overwrite the material ID of all the faces passed to it. We want to be able to assign a multi sub material with a different material for the wooden part and for the metal pivots. Let's add another parameter, mat ID. This parameter will be optional and will have the default value of 1. That means that when the function transform mesh is caught only with a mesh and transformation matrix but no material ID parameter, it will assume that material ID is equal to 1. If material ID was specified, the value that was passed as argument will be used instead. Inside the function, we'll have another loop for f is equal to 1 to the mesh num faces and we'll set the face mat ID of the f face in the mesh to the material ID parameter passed to the function. This is all that we had to change here. Now we don't even have to change the bottom box and the side box and the front box whenever they are calling the transform mesh function since we want material ID 1 to be assigned to all their faces and not specifying the material ID here will automatically implicitly use 1 as the value. What we'll have to change though is the initial value of the mesh was taken straight from the try mesh value of the bottom box without passing it through the transform mesh function which means that the bottom mesh would have multiple IDs the defaults of a box primitive as you probably know a box primitive has six material IDs pre-assigned to its all uh, sides to so front, back, left, right, top and bottom so in order to get the mesh variable initialized in the beginning to a try mesh value that contains material D1 on all the faces, we'll have to call the transform mesh function with the bottom box mesh, just like we did for the side and front and so on. And we use the TM before it was changed because we don't want any translations or rotations or scaling this means that the bottom box will now have material D1 just like the sides and the fronts and the lid because it will be passed to the transform mesh function. Now that we made this change, we want to also set the pivots, these are the cylinders here, to use the material ID2 when calling the transform mesh function. So I'll say mat ID will be true for the cylinder. And when passing the second cylinder here, we'll also add material ID2. Another thing that we'll have to do is make sure that our boxes and cylinders have valid mapping coordinates. So if we assign a texture to the material, that texture would be able to display and render. We'll set the map chords parameter, that's a construction parameter of a box and the cylinder, to true, which means that our bottom, side, front, lid box, and also the cylinder will generate valid UV coordinates every time. All that is left now is to actually assign the material to the object. We will add another handler. Right now we have the handler on build mesh do and we have the tool create. We are going to create a handler which is called attached to node. This handler will be called every time where the base object 
that we created, the lid box, is actually attached to a scene node to be displayed in the scene as a separate object. This happens when we create the object using the create tab button, when we create an object using MaxScript or when we copy an existing object as a new object in the scene. So the first thing that we'll do is check if the argument that is passed to this handler, which is the node that the plugin was attached to, has a valid material. And if it doesn't, that means if the material property is equal to undefined, only in those cases we will create and assign a new material. If the node that we're attaching to already has a material, for example in the case when we are copying a box object, the copy could also have uh, previously assigned material because uh, we already uh, created it uh, using the same code. In that case, we don't want a new material to be created and we want to reuse the existing one. If, uh, for whatever reason, a different material, not the automatically created one, was already assigned to a box, we also don't want to overwrite that one. We'll create a variable, the multimat, and we'll create a multimaterial with the name lidbox and a number of submaterials equal to two. We'll also create a wood map. This will be a bitmap texture, which will use the file name. You probably recognize this uh, GIF file. It has been in 3ds Max since the beginning, probably even in 3D Studio DOS. It's a typical wooden texture and we're not specifying any path because uh, this texture is installed automatically when 3ds Max is deployed and uh, it is placed in a map path so it should be uh, automatically resolved when we mention just the file name without a path. Now let's assign to the first slot of the multi-material a standard material with a diffuse color set to 200, 150 and a diffuse map set to the wood map that we just created and the second multi-material also a standard but this one will be gray 200, 200, 200 and no diffuse map. Now we can assign the material that we just created to the material property of the node that the plugin was attached to and to make it even more interesting we'll use the show texture map method we'll call it on the first submaterial of the multi-material and we'll pass the wood map as the texture to be enabled and we'll set the uh, third parameter to on which means enable the texture in the viewport. We can also use true, it's uh, equivalent. Let's keep it true. Now let's evaluate our code and see if we have any errors. If we would now go and create a new lid box in the scene, the texture part was resolved and now we have a box which looks like made of wood. If we would turn around and take a look at the pivots, they are using the second submaterial which has the gray diffuse color and no texture. And if we would take one existing box and create a copy in the scene, since this box didn't have a material, the copy automatically got a material. We could open the material editor and assign a new gray material. Let's change its color to something like this and then try to copy this one. If we would copy this box, since it already has a material, our code doesn't override the existing material and doesn't turn it into 
wood but preserves the existing one. This uh, automatic assignment doesn't work when creating an instance of uh, an existing object. So if we would try to create an instance of this box, it doesn't call the handler attached to node. So it works only when creating with the create button or when we are copying into uh, the scene using the copy option. At this point we can save our script as step 6.